15th Forum on Latin America here in Sao Paulo. I'd like to welcome everyone in the room and of course all of our viewers online. Today we are here to hear a new announcement on a new strategy, the Industrial Strategy 4.0. And I'm joined today, um, going in order of seating, by Luis Augusto Ferreira, President of the Brazilian Industrial Development, Marcos Jorge de Lima, Minister of Industry of Foreign Trade and Services of Brazil, Paulo Abello de Castro, a President of the Brazilian Development Bank, Ronaldo Camargo, Vice President of Financiadores de Estudio y Projetos. Welcome, gentlemen, for joining us today. Mr. Minister, you have this new strategy uh, for industry to announce today. We are excited to hear all about it. Okay. Boom. I would like before anything to thank you all for your presence, the presence of the uh, National Bank of Deve Economic and Social Development. Thank you, uh, Ronaldo, for your presence. Uh, Guto Ferreira, Luis Augusto Ferreira, who was uh, very important for all this uh, building. Uh, I need to uh, remind you that this new strategy uh, comes from my antecessor, predecessor, uh, Arco Antonio, uh, following the example of Germany and the United States. I am uh, going into the matter. Uh, the whole team of the Ministry of uh, Industry, uh, Foreign Trade and Services, so that we can uh, work a strategy for an industry 4.0 that we're launching here today. So we've been working a lot for the whole uh, 2017 with uh, F, uh, private initiative, uh, several industries structuring, shaping a collaborative work with the private initiative uh, so that we can define uh, the best strategy for the Brazilian industry so we not, are not too late and too, be, too behind uh, compared to the rest of the world as for connectivity, industrialization, that what can modernize our country. And one of uh, some of them of those elements are uh, pivotal so that companies can uh, transform their companies. The chapter, which is uh, the one of financing, the uh, BNDS uh, president will uh, talk about this, but we had other concerns uh, within this agenda. Uh, uh, President uh, Gut Ferreira will speak about uh, some of the initiatives under his initiative within the ABDI so that we can uh, do some uh, uh, some tests, real tests for the 4.0, and to talk about some initiatives. And I here would like to thank Marcel, uh, who helped to the approval with the COMEX for the exportation of robots for those who are not product, produced in Brazil. But when we speak of one of the, those uh, Access in Brazil, those topics we are concerned, we wanted to uh, 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 respect the RN12, uh, a, a national decree in Brazil, so that through the modernization of this uh, regulatory norm, and uh, here I would like to thank publicly the Ministry of uh, Employment which has been instrumental. We are de-bureaucratizing de in line with the needs of companies, of freight companies. And our main concern, productivity. We are also uh, focused on competitiveness, and we have only one path. I'd like to uh, congratulate Professor Schwab with the, his agenda for this uh, World Economic Forum. And today we took breakfast together, and uh, I could uh, congratulate him for uh, 
uh, as a founder and as a very pivotal role for the economy. So I'd like to highlight, highlight this uh, government effort and coordinated with several uh, players within the Brazilian economy. I'd like to thank also the uh, president's cabinet, the minister of uh, science and technology represented by FINEP, who has followed each uh, debate step, the participation of several players, uh, such as uh, the one I've mentioned here. Such, uh, I'm consulting with our moderator, uh, whether if I can go on with my presentation. Pedro de Castro, um, can you expand a little bit on the financing of this new strategy and your role in this? Thank you, Mr. Governor. Good afternoon to all panelists and uh, participants of this session, of this press conference. I'd like to thank for the opportunity uh, given by the National Bank of Social and Economic Development uh, for this opportunity. And the Director of Strategic Planning is uh, present here, is within, with us in the room and coordinates the, the outlining of uh, the loans for the BNDS on the short and mid term. The participation of the bank uh, on the general matter of innovation, we have an experience of uh, 77 years. So we, ha we can uh, give the context of, of this debate so that you don't have the impression fruit of uh, the imagination of a few that Brazil has just discovered in, uh, industrial innovation that uh, one we use to call to label as uh, innovation 4.0. 75 years ago, uh, since its founding in 1952, the BNDS has been working on this issue and is being uh, committed to the modernization of uh, Brazil uh, through several phases. When we, we, we were referring ourselves to industry, industry 3.0, uh, when the issue was banking, the banking system, uh, and with the development of Petrobras from uh, 74 uh, forwards in the area of energy, mainly electrical uh, power energy, uh, hydropower, and then a nuclear energy, which is still controversial, but is uh, in use in power, our petrochemical and uh, steel industry, which, uh, which is up to date nowadays. This discovery of uh, of a new industry, a new phase in the industry development, uh, the post-manufacturing, uh, this dematerialization of industry, each is really this uh, uh, novelty, and uh, which comes from comes from the uh, handicraft or very small scaled to. Uh, a new phase, which is an investigative one, with an industry which she considers research and development as part, intrinsical part of the production of uh, the semiconductors, uh, FINEP and BNDS. We are investing together in this field, and I hope that we uh, uh, have success so that the first uh, uh, manufacturer of semiconductors and will can be built and uh, and settles in Brazil because it, it it has been the plant exists near to Belo Horizonte in the Minas Gerais state with all the uh, equipment still uh, packed and there are some workers working but they need their equipment and the the green light the final green light these are the conditions which define how banks and the public bank BNDS and 
its partners. Innovation has occurred in Brazil uh, a few years ago, uh, thanks to the new strategic plan, which by chance in this this week has been concluded uh, this week within BNDS. It's a strategic plan uh, at the horizon of, of uh, 2035 with a vision uh, uh, a challenging vision for this horizon of 2035, which are the title Brazil, a developed country, which is a, to tease the government and other partners. Uh, we are a country that can uh, uh, state that is uh, de developed at the horizon of 2035, and it is our priority within the bank since BNDS is the major institutional investor in Brazil, indirectly because it's only is enhancing investment uh, with the capital of others. Therefore, within this a strategic vision for 2035, innovation remains because it has always been there, but it remains highlighted and as a priority uh, along to the characteristics that we already know. We are facing what we call the, uh, the era of knowledge. This is how we could describe the speed of accumulation of information which transform information itself as a fact of the production factor as a pivotal production factor from there has come another uh, concept the inter the internet of things because it's a concept which gathers in the cloud uh, wherever it is uh, uh, a gathering of information it can be a small sensor which uh, uh, registers uh, urban mobility. It can be a sensor adapted in a, in an agricultural machine that will gather information about the uh, the the reap, or it can be within an hospital sensor uh, studying a patient in the recovery phase, and uh, something which is very dear to the Brazilians. It can be a sensor for ID of uh, people uh, scanning the face of uh, someone at any given airport, which uh, tackles the problem of public security. Uh, there is an array of uh, uses possible for sensors and where we could uh, significantly increase the productivity and the safety with the 80 billion reais that Brazil is already Spending in terms of federal and uh, uh, state uh, budgets for security. So the bank is deeply involved in that. We are the bank for innovation, and we are willing to create a concept, and we've done that, to establish priorities within the budget, which is what we've just done the last week when we approved political and operational, we come from a spread, a banking spread of 1.7, and it was decreased to 0.9. The spread that is used for the 2.0, 4.0, sorry, um, industry. However, there is a specific feature, Mr. Minister. The maximum incentive in the bank goes through different lines, not just to one line. So modernizing a group of industries and adding robots. So our bank is prepared to state that in an initial ballpark figure, we could evolve from about 1 billion reais this year which is already which has already started so it might sound feel uh, not it might sound that it's not enough but it's a lot since we're in the third month but we could reach 1.5 billion or 2 billion next year 
So that's 100% growth uh, compared to what's been invested. And that would leave us with around 5 billion. The good news is that the bank doesn't have a limit in its budget for what's priority. Theoretically, if Brazil clicks and leaps in that direction, which depends on other aspects we're not going to discuss now, political, macroeconomic aspects and the state of Brazilian society. If the leap takes place, the bank will be ready to face larger uh, budget uh, challenges. You spoke a lot about innovation. Um, Mr. Carmajo, can you speak to your, the role that you see for yourself and for uh, FINEP in this new strategy? It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Guto. Uh, in Sao Paulo for seven years. Thank you, Paulo, who is a colleague, an investor. We work together at FINEP and BNDS, not just in terms of innovation, but also in a first Brazilian, the first Brazilian semiconductors company. Before I start, I would like to state that FINEP wears two shoes, in a sense. So we have the National Fund for Scientific Development. That's one of them. We join together 26 funds, and they manage non-refundable resources for innovation and investment in science and technology. Our FINEP, the Brazilian Agency for Innovation and Research, Research is a bit younger than the Brazilian Bank for Development. However, it has a history of 50 years, one year before uh, the revolution of computing and automation. And now we are going through the fourth industrial revolution. So cyber physics systems. And in that sense, FINEP has been modernizing and restructuring to act in its mission to foster, together with the Center for Research and Development. The other shoe we wear is refundable financing. Is translation working? Can you hear me? Can you hear the translation? Is it working? De todo esse contexto, pela primeira vez o governo federal efetivamente uniu as forças através do Ministério da Indústria e Comércio, do Ministério da Ciência, Tecnologia e Comunicações, no sentido de efetivamente fixar uma só política para a indústria, para a manufatura 4.0, como também para o IoT e assim por diante. IoT, que é um grande programa que o Ministério da Ciência e Tecnologia deverá anunciar daqui a dois meses, aproximadamente, e também interliga com a questão da indústria 4.0 de maneira ampla. Acabei de participar de duas reuniões aqui no Congresso com duas grandes empresas e o ministro Gilberto Kassab, discutindo exatamente essa questão. A FINEP, similarmente ao BNDES, ela possui um limite bastante amplo de investimento para a ciência e tecnologia. Para vocês terem ideia, o dinheiro reembolsável, através de quatro políticas que deverão ser aprovadas dentro em breve, até o próximo mês, nós temos 7 bilhões <coughs> de reais para empréstimos neste ano. Além do que, nós contraímos e assinaremos daqui a um mês 1 bilhão e 500 milhões de dólares do BID para também fazer investimento em inovação e assim por diante. Esse conjunto financeiro, ele interligado na política do governo federal, em parceria 
com o Ministério da Indústria, com o Ministério da Ciência e Tecnologia e sempre com o BNDES nas principais operações, nós deveremos ter, a princípio, mais de 3 milhões para os três próximos anos. Esses 3 bilhões nós deveremos investir também sem limite. Poderemos, por exemplo... Em, através de sete setores da indústria 4.0, aplicar parte desse 1 bilhão e 500 milhões é, do BID, é, como também esse restante financeiro que nós temos para investimentos reembolsáveis. Então, basicamente, é, a, a fotografia é, da FINEP, a nossa colaboração através do Ministério da Ciência e Tecnologia, Uh, com o Ministério da, Cia, da, da Indústria e Comércio, uh, é essa. Lembrando também que é a única empresa nacional de tecnologia uh, uh, vinculada também ao Ministério da Ciência e Tecnologia uh, e Comunicações, é a Ceitec, uma empresa que nós estamos recuperando a passos largos no sentido também de induzi-la a esse crescimento e essa revolução uh, uh, que, sem dúvida nenhuma, é, nós estamos no caminho muito certo e aceleradamente chegaremos lá. So before we hear from, unfortunately, um, Mr. The Minister will have to leave us to join another panel. For, so thank you for, very much for joining us and for giving us some of your time today. Uh, antes And I'd like to thank uh, Guto Ferreira for everything we're doing together. Our portal of the 4.0 industry is already live. We are going to have a tool for the, for the test of 4.0 industry. And there will be tests also made uh, for industries. That's in a virtual environment. And they can be assessed on their level of maturity in order to check how they are in terms of maturity. And then we can focus on the need of each company and their maturity towards the industry 4.0. I apologize, I'm out of time. I have to go to the other panel, and we are going to talk specifically about the 4.0 industry. I'd like to reinforce that this is a new era for the national industry. We now have the opportunity, a structured opportunity, to foster, whether with uh, exemption for tax exemption for bots that will be received in our country, we will be able to bring them. Thank you for the Chamber of Foreign Trade. They now have zero tariffs. And also we have financing at attra with attractive interest rates. We also have Connection Startup as a program that connects startups and large companies. So those that demand for uh, uh, financing and those that offer financing, they get connected, and everything structured in a very intelligent manner. Uh, thank you, Igor Calver, Mr. Secretary, Rafael,
Also, and thank you to the press, the press that is present here at the room. Thank you for covering our work and for this opportunity to debate the Brazil we want to have. This is the Brazil of the future, the Brazil that will allow us to have the opportunity to seize such a rare opportunity in an economy that is leaving a crisis and uh, with real expectations of GDP growth. 23 months ago, our GDP was of minus 3.5 percent. And in a very brief pe period of time, we've reached a positive GDP last year. And this year, we will have a GDP of positive 3 percent. So thank you to the World Economic Forum once again for bringing this topic, uh, for the relevance you give to the, such a key uh, topic for the world. Brazil is evolving to reach uh, uh, the next uh, technological evolution. Thank you very much. <coughs> so I will ask um, Mr. Ferrer. Uh, Mr. Ferrer, uh, could you expand on some of the comments that Mr. Uh, minister has shared with us today. Primeiro, é importante essa agenda do. This agenda here at the Economic Forum, we're quite tight on time. So, Ronaldo, uh, hello, Paulo. We've been talking about the 4.0 industry for such a long time. At the Industry Federation, Igor, Mr. Secretary, you are the person in the Ministry of Industry and Commerce that will work with competitiveness. Rafael, you are coordinating the formulation of the 4.0 industry. We have some good news here. Good times are back. And the economy, albeit in a shy manner, shows some signs of recovery. This allows to this allow the National Bank for Development to invest with more precision, and the Foundation for Research can support initiatives around innovation and IoT. I was part of the consultant board at the National Bank for Development for the IoT sector. As for the 4.0 industry, the Brazilian Agency for Industrial Development has some comments regarding productivity. Of course, we are having a debate right now about reindustrialization. I don't like this term, reindustrialization. I think it's a readjustment of the Brazilian um, industry se sector. We have to adjust to new global trends to have new global values, value chains. Technology requests smaller rooms, more productive at a lower cost. Earlier this or morning, we were talking to Professor Schwab, and he said that energy efficiency can be an amazing entry door for the 4.0 industry in Brazil. Uh, the ministry has a program that's called Productive Brazil. It's a program for energy efficiency. We've been working with this uh, with companies around the world. That's uh, over 3,000 companies. And energy efficiency, right from the start, it decreases costs by 20 or 30 percent. There's also the matter of labor, human material. The 4.0 industry uh, requires not only uh, an amazing scale of data. Data has become a commodity today, but what do we do with data? How do we work intelligently with the data? Well, machines can do that. They talk to each other. But human beings behind machines, that's what will lead to decision making, even in the government. So we have to prepare public managers, and we need you know, skilled professionals to work with Industry 4.0. Another aspect is that this politic, policy comes at a key point in Brazil. Brazil is now in a path not to, dis, to dis debate the topic. This is a debate that's been going on for a while now. But we now have effective initiatives. We have diagnosed, we have self-diagnosed our own industry. And then we have the test beds. 
Finally, we reach funding lines. The private sector must know that is key. They must believe in the recovery of our country. This government has been doing reforms, and we are paying the price to leave a leaner country for uh, the next uh, administrations. But we need skilled uh, people to work with the 4.0 industry. We also work with machines. That's a huge problem regarding who is going to be benefited. Is it the industry or just an elite in the industry? And maybe initially this will reach large industry industries. But at the medium term, this will shorten periods. Industrial policies have to be redebated and medium and large uh, companies will also benefit from the 4.0 industry. So farmers will have access to connectivity. Farmers will have access to technology and they will be able to have uh, information, quality data, and going, are going to transfer this to retailers. So we're talking not only about the 4.0 industry, but also about a 4.0 country. And the Brazilian Agency for Industrial Development, we've been working in close partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Trade and Industry. The 4.0 industry is successful around the world, and they're working already with retailers. So this is about behavior, education, technology, about a country that has a 4.0 mindset throughout the whole chain. The 4.0 industry will change Brazilian society. 5% of industries that are part of the 4.0 industries, they have changed. And within 20 years, we want to have at least 15% of our industry uh, in the 4.0 area. We must be bold to talk about jobs. I know that you might ask questions about this. It's important to state that jobs will be lost. This is not true. In the next 20 years, we will create over 200 million new jobs. In some positions, we don't even know by now. The question for Brazil is how to prepare new generations so for this transition. How will we prepare new generations to face the new jobs that will be born around the world connected to technology and to the 4.0 industry? So this is a sound policy. It's based on diagnosis. It has financing. The National Bank for Development has a support of 10 billion reais. And from then on, we must give this scale in our, in our country. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank someone who's not in the room but who was responsible to uh, bring not only the World Economic Forum, but the person responsible for having this forum here, Minister Marcos Pereira. He gave us the freedom in the ministry to work, and in such a short period, we launched this policy. Come, please name your name and the media outlet you're from. Boa tarde, meu nome é Vitor, sou da IT Media. My name is Victor, I'm from AT Media. I would like to go back to the percentage 15. In 15 years, 15% 15 of the industry will be 4.0, well, and up to 20 years. We would actually like to reach 18% of the industry 4.0. Germany, for instance, they invest about 20 billion euros a year in the development of 4.0 industries. Of course, this is not part of our reality in Brazil, but there have been efforts, and we work in a partnership with the Science and Technology Ministry. To have connectivity, this structure is permeated by connectivity. So one thing leads to the other, and we believe we can reach this number. My question is, you mentioned this is a sound policy. You created it in one and a half year. You bring together BNDS and FINAP, different agencies. Uh, what are you doing s for that uh, to remain after the new government takes office? 
Well, I come from the startup industry and the innovation industry. The 4.0 industry policy, just like the national policy for IoT, these are not uh, government policies. These are state policies, and I think we all believe in that. They are the foundation for a new government to have a head start. We want to leave a structure behind. So diagnosis, for instance, at the 4.0 industry, they will behave, be able to do that with the data that we are putting at the website right now. This data will be accessible for the new administration after the elections. In the industry ministry, we have technicians that remained uh, throughout the last administrations. So the industry ministry has not had a lot of turnover in, in the employees. And they, I hope they will remain in the next administration as well. Good afternoon. I'm from Business News America. My name is Pedro. You said that you worked one year and a half to design this strategy. I believe there was a bit of a delay. Uh, you had mentioned uh, that there was a delay, right? That's the first part of my question. Why was there the delay? And what is this strategy about? As far as we understand, it's financing between FINAPI and BNDS. Then we have the test beds. And then we have tax exemption for bots. Is that it in the first moment? And just finalizing, how do we tie together all the policies the government has. You talked about uh, IoT, the plan for IoT, the digitalization plan. How do you tie everything together? I'm sorry, I might forget one of your questions you asked a lot. The delay we had. Industrial policies that started to be debated in Brazil in 2003 uh, with Minister Furlan these policies are undergoing change. Chemistry is quite a complex sector, very intense on research, and research takes several decades. So for those sectors, we can debate a long-term policy, but it takes longer. In the auto industry, we had 10-year cycles in Brazil, but now we work in cycles of five years. In Germany, they work with cycles of three years. So cars become a software and service platform. And then uh, the authorities must have a different sense of urgency, working more like private companies. So the delay was because of that debate precisely. We could not rush because we wanted to have a sound policy, but we could not delay ourselves because we couldn't lose the momentum. So the delay was due to some issues connected to the urgency of innovation and the analog, so to speak, feature of the public realm. I think that having done that in one year and a half, you know, launching a new policy in one year and a half, we didn't start from scratch. The team from the industry ministry was working on that. We have Rafael, he's an expert in 4.0 innovation. We have Bruno also. And they were already talking about competitiveness in the Brazilian industry, how to reduce costs and increase competitiveness. So that was the foundation. Second, th second question? Oh, the three pillars. Well, tax exemption for bots, for importing bots. This is not one pillar. It's part of all the pillars. It has an impact on how to adjust our industry by using collaborative bots or industrial bots. So this is really part of the strategy. We face a difficulty in the country. We are a country of continental dimensions. So to talk about 4.0 in South Korea or in Israel is quite different than talking about 4.0 industry in such a huge country like Brazil. Most of our country is still working with commodities and not with transformation industry. That's why we need a self-diagnosis. We are inviting the national industry to self-diagnose in our website. And we want to understand if we are talking about a 1.0, 2.0 industry, or maybe even a 4.0. And then we move for the 4.0 stage. Yes, it's a journey. 
we take to reach the 4.0 industry. Of course, this is not just about the 4.0 industry. We are taking advantage of the digitalization of the industry to go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4. So these are the steps in the ladder. And in 15 to 20 years, we want to have a complete, uh, completely different industry. Your third question is about a challenge authorities face for a while. I am, I've learned to respect the structure of the public uh, realm. I like to highlight that. In the in Minister of Industry and Foreign Trade, we have amazing technicians. We have people that think uh, like private companies. But you have boundaries within the structure. All around the world, governments are not very good at communicating what they do. This is a challenge we face, you know, to place uh, BNDS, the industry, ministry, and other partners. It's amazing to have everyone here in this table. I was part of BNDS's IoT plan. I was part of the board. The challenge today, however, for the public realm is to be leaner, faster, and communicate well. That's what matters, communicating results. People just want to know about results. And I can speak on behalf of my agency and f on behalf of myself. I am positive that this policy we're bringing now with these partners it integrates other ministries, it is a sound policy, and we will have consistent results. And I hope you put pressure on us. Uh, Vinicius Torres Freire from Folha de São Paulo newspaper. What is the strategy about? We saw a summary of that in the papers today. What is the difference between the financing uh, BNDS is already doing? You mentioned that you've been doing this for a while. These are credits of five billion in three years. Will there be a difference other than the spread? Will that depend on a self-diagnosis? What will happen differently in practical terms? So also training professors, granting money for 20 startups, is that? Correct? You probably read the story. What about this strategy is different? VNDS already gave financing before that, right? You talked about FINEP's uh, money, 7 million and then 3.5 billion dollars that you are going to receive from the Inter-American Development Bank. I don't understand the numbers exactly, if you could explain in further detail. 2.5 billion, is that it? I, I don't understand. Can you please clarify the figures? Before financing, and we have experts to talk about that, just talking about startups, the fourth industrial revolution supposes that we have a completely different tech level, and it's disruptive. We can work in that sense not only in traditional research centers, but also in startups and scale-ups. We have a program we place 50 million reais to connect startups and the industry. Embraer, 3M, VR Foods, Caterpillar. We have done an amazing match between the industry and the startups. We also have a program called FINEP Startups, and the National Bank for Development is also investing in that. This is part of a wave in the government which supports the new tech generation in Brazil. And now I give the floor to my colleagues who are the experts in the numbers and in the money. Thank you, Vinicius, for your questions. I'm going to try to be brief because we are running out of time. So we must consider what is about an, an induced um, 
adoption, and that's what we're trying to foster when we make uh, re resources available. I'd like to remind you of something my director reminded me of. Maturity now is not of 20 years anymore, is, of, is not of 10 years anymore, it's of 20 years payment time. So we decrease the spread for the loan and we increase the deadlines, the due dates for the funds. So you have smaller installments, of course, if you do a mortgage in 10 years, it's different than if you do it in 20 years. More important than that is what Ferreira mentioned when he said that our greatest concern is with the anonymous companies. The companies that we don't know yet, there are 11 million uh, companies and there are far or 5 million micro companies. And some companies we don't know, it's hard to access all of them. That's why we are creating, this week, we are restructuring our bank and now we have the EBNDS. It's a digital bank. I don't like to use this term, actually, because this is a bank within a bank. It is in itself a fintech. So it organizes the EBNDS. It's a hub. It collects information about providers and customers and money is in between. So we facilitate the adoption of technology whatever it is, as long as these micro-entrepreneurs have access to credit, regardless if, of whether this is for a 4.0 use. But these resources were not available before. We have very few credit available in Brazil in general terms. Thinking about risks and shareholders, we have three CREATEX, that's the name we give it at the bank. That's about 200 and something million reais. It's an extremely efficient, this program. We foster the rise of startups that are identified regionally also supporting regional development, private uh, agents that place startups in incubators. And we've been managed, we've managed to detect amazing profitability for the set of operations of these funds. They can be multiplied in numbers and they can also increase in size. I would like to highlight this revolution is not about billions that are made available. Of course, it's important that the government takes a position and says, this money is here, come to BNDS and ask for credit. These, these billions do not solve things. What solves the problems is accessibility. BNDS is completely focused on being an accessible platform for micro and small entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean we haven't reached a level of 62% of participation of small and medium companies. If we ask here, people here in this room, and everybody is well informed, you're going to say, well, it's probably 6%. But we are over 60% in the participation of companies. Finally, I would like to highlight planning. I don't want to leave this room without talking about our action plan. And you were part of the creation of this action plan. It's the action plan for IoT. It organizes the participation of the bank in a near future. One final comment, I hope you allow me to do that. There is no evolution or induced adoption of our of this plan. We're going to talk about this on the 20th next week. We're going to have a debate in our bank for this plan. 
We cannot do that if macroeconomy is not well organized. If we don't have the appropriate tax system, if we don't have a financial system uh, focused on fine-tuning these decisions, if we don't have uh, less red tape or red, less bureaucracy, it's going to be quite complicated on the other side to compensate all these three huge obstacles with specific industrial uh, policies for adoption. This is going to happen only by chance in some industries that have more, um, that tend to use technology more. And it's amazing to see that agribusiness is doing that in Brazil right now. For joining us today. I'd like to thank everyone in the room and online. Uh, if you are interested in more information, please check out the website mdis.gov.br for more information. Thank you.